Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody. Welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. The goodness of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes. I'm just glad to be in the land of the living. Amen. Yes. God has already blessed you. Whether you realize it or not, yes. God has already blessed you. When that one eye of it, both ears open and one mind, sometimes only one eye open at one time. When not, your eyes open up, God has already begun to bless you. When you sleep through the night, God has blessed you. When you wake up in the morning, in your right mind, God has already blessed you. So we are blessed this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are blessed. So we thank the Lord. Let's have a, a word of prayer. As we come into your presence right now, God, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Not only do we need you, we love you. We love you. We love you. We praise you. We adore you because you are such a great God and great to be praised, oh God. We thank you for all the things that you have done, all the things you've yet to do in our lives. We thank you for those who are signing on now to uh, be a part of this worship experience, for those who are in the room. We thank you, God, even now for growth, not only numerically, but we thank you, God, for us growing spiritually. That you will continue to keep your hand of mercy upon this ministry, God, and all the ministries that are called by your name. That you will be glorified in every house this day that calls upon your name. That someone today will be saved because we called upon your name. And we give your name praise, honor, and glory because you are worthy of praise, honor, and glory. We thank you right now for life, for health, for strength, for providing for us, for jobs, for homes, for shelter. We thank you right now for the ability to be able to give even. To give to those who are less fortunate, to give to our loved ones. Thank you for the gift of giving that you give in our own lives by sacrificing your life for us. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We commit this service to you that somebody, God, will, hearts will be lifted because they came this way this day. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning, we're grateful to God. I want to cover my announcements. I want to get <coughs> out of the way because we got a preacher in the house. All right. Amen. Amen. Get the preliminaries out of the way. Um, Sunday school uh, this morning. We announced Sunday school because we want you to follow um, the lesson. The lessons are good. Sunday school this morning, we had Who Has Believed um, by Minister Michael Eccles Jr. Facilitated. Devotional reading was Deuteronomy 30, verse 11 to 20. Background scripture were, came from Romans 10, 1 to 21. Uh, next week's lesson who has, uh, okay, I think I have the wrong message for next week, but next week's lesson devotional is um, Galatians 3, 19 to 29, the background scripture is Colossians 1, 19 through 2, 5, I don't have the title of that message, look it up from real quick in that book, and I'll give it to them, I want to take this moment to um, thank, it's right in front of you, Beth. I want to take this moment to thank each one of you for uh, for your participation on yesterday's outreach. Amen. Amen. And um, we, I've changed somewhat what we do. Um, I'm not going to show pictures like we used to. I'm not going to even show us serving because we want to do this for God. Amen. Amen. So those who come. We're doing, who has believed? That's the right one. Who has believed? I think I had the wrong title for us. Okay. Who has believed? That was the day. That was the day. Glorious riches for next week from Galatians. That's what I wanted. Glorious riches. This was who believed today for Sunday school. Glorious riches. All right. But I want to take the moment. So we're not going to advertise what we do. Those of you that give to this ministry know that this is a faithful ministry. We need the monies in order to keep the ministry going. Uh, although those recipients that get those things we give out is free to them, but ministry costs, mm -hmm. right? And it costs a lot, and it's getting high, high inflation. We don't want to diminish what we do for um, the people we give outreach to because we do supply uh, them with clean underwear, and those underwear are becoming very expensive. So those who have been giving, increase your giving with inflation. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And those who have never given, uh, uh, this ministry will be faithful over those things you give to us as faithful as we can be. Uh, we know it's hard to earn money that provides these things. We want to keep doing this because it's helping many people. We serve, we had maybe about 100, what y'all think about 100? More than 100. Mm -hmm. Because we had a lot of people yesterday, and some mm -hmm. came through two or three times. We didn't deny them. 
uh, what they what they wanted. So um, we want to keep on being able to do outreach. And we also want to enlist those of you who want to help us because the more hands we have, the more efficient we can be in the giving of those things in a proper way so everyone is served properly. So we thank God. Thank God for each one of you, sir, who gave your time and effort. Because when we got done, we were, we were tired. And we were ready to get out the heat. But we thank God for the opportunity to uh, serve. Thank God, my young people. Thank God in particular for mine. All right. Um, Bible study will resume this Thursday. We have another month of study before we go on a summer break for July and August. So come with us. Be with us on this Thursday at 7 uh, to 8 o'clock. We'll have Bible study. I want to deal with um, some reasons why the Word of God does not abide in our lives. I want to deal with those reasons why. Excuse me. Uh, this week. All right. Uh, but this morning we have a preacher and we have a singer. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you the verse of scripture under consideration this morning. Uh, Psalm 18, verses 46 to 50. Psalm 18, verses 46 to 50. All right, we've got that. Those in the house, please stand. For this. Those at home. I'm picking you up. They good? No more. All right. A little bit more. Oh, you go right there. All right. <laughs> All right. Those who are um, here standing and those who are home, please acknowledge and, and, and give God's word uh, standing where you are, even at home if you can stand, to acknowledge God's word because it is holy. Amen. 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 Uh, Psalm 18, 46 to 50. <coughs> the Lord is living. Praise be to my rock. And let the God of my salvation be honored. It is God who sends punishment on my haters. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and put peoples under my rule. He makes me free from my haters. And I'm lifted up over those who come up against me. You have made me free from the violent man. Because, this, because of this, I will give you praise, O Lord, among the nations. And I will make a song of praise to your name. Verse 50. Great salvation does he give to his king. <coughs> he has mercy on the king of his selection, David, and on his seed forever. This morning's message, you may be seated. This morning's message is something I need and you need, all of us need. Cultivating a grateful heart. So after the... Um, some modern selection done by Minister Vashti Eccles. We'll hear from our minister of this morning, Minister Beverly Eccles. This is our associate minister Sunday, and it's her turn. And she is excited Amen. Amen. to get it over. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so after that, after Vashti will come, the next speaking voice you'll hear that is Beverly Jean Eccles. Oh, I've heard. <laughs> Praise the Lord, kingdom praise. Praise the Lord, kingdom praise. I said praise the Lord, kingdom praise. Amen. We're going to start off with some songs of praise. Amen. 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 This is like one of my favorite songs. I've sung it many times before, <coughs> so join in if y'all know it. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. How many of us are grateful for breath this morning? You give life, you are love, 
You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out Shout your praise. Yeah. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you. Shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out Sean realized how blessed he is, but he's blessed. Amen. And I don't really realize 
Do we really think about how God is constantly looking over us? <clears throat> how he's constantly unfolding things for us? Things could be so much worse. Mm -hmm. But yet he still has his hand on us and he's yeah. still blessing us. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I turn on the television, I look and see what's in Oklahoma and Texas where a three-minute storm can come through and flatten out your entire house and your property. Yeah, everything. You go from being wealthy to nothing mm -hmm. in a matter of seconds. We are blessed. Yeah. And I just pray that God would take that devastation that those people are going through <coughs> and bless them too. Because, you know, sometimes God has to take away some things so we will realize exactly who he is yeah. mm -hmm. and how much we really need him. So those were the things I was thinking about, and it just came to me, you know what? We need to have that conversation. We need to cultivate, cultivate our hearts so that we will be thankful, grateful for all that God has done. Because, you know, it's really easy to take someone for granted. Mm -hmm. The kids take the moms and dads for granted. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad may take each other for granted. But we should value each and every person. And thank them for what they do for us. And God has done so much for us. Because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be able to get out of that bed. Mm -hmm. Because how many of y'all known somebody who may have went to bed one night, but the next morning, they didn't rise? Mm -hmm. That could happen to any of us. Yep. You go to work. Thinking that you're going to do an eight-hour-day job. Come home, see your family, and you've got plans. But you may not make it to work, and you may not make it home. So we should be grateful for all the time that we have together. That's not the way I plan to start off on my writing, but that's no, that's what we go. But with all that in mind, I just wanted to think about, okay, David, because David was somebody in the Bible who was grateful to God. In fact, God considered him a man of his, after his own heart because he knew that David loved him and that David would worship for him. And not only that, he would do whatever God asked him to do. Are we obedient to God? Do we do what God tells us to do? I know you hear that still small voice sometimes. Do you pay attention to it or do you ignore it? The ones that tell you shut up, you gotta have the last word. Mm -hmm. The one who tells you, you know what, be nice, help that person out. Yeah. The one who may even tell you, that young lady's struggling, why don't you buy the groceries for her? Mm -hmm. How many of us listen? Mm -hmm. But I wanna be obedient to God, be grateful for what He's given me, and do what He calls us to do. Now I'm going to take some time talking about David because David had a hard life. And some of us say, okay, but we got hard life. We're going through struggles. And we all go through struggles. And those struggles come through our lives because sometimes in order for God to bless us, he got to take us out of the situation that we're in. Because we get comfortable and we may not want to go. The job that causes you a lot of stress and headache is better than no job, but you're not going to leave on your own until God take you out. That relationship who got you crying all night long, but you're going to stay there. Sometimes God has to intervene and take you out. And sometimes when he takes us out of those situations, it's for our good. He opened up doors for us to make us better individuals and to receive a better blessing. But, you know, sometimes we're not going to do it on our own. Sometimes we go through storms and trials that we feel like God cannot help us out at all because we made a mess of things. We don't know how he can help us. We don't know what he's going to do. And that little thing we did may not cause problems, not only cause problems for ourselves, but may have also caused problems for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And we don't see a way out. I'm going to tell you the best advice that I can possibly give you Turn it over to God. Yeah. Because I want you to remember that God can do anything but fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you just, when you know you sin, just confess that thing and give it over to God. And he will work out everything for your 
benefits. Yeah. May not be the way you want it, but remember that God got a purpose and a plan for everything that we go through. And he knows how to do what's right for us. So, with knowing that God got a purpose and a plan, and knowing that he's looking out over me 24-7, mm -hmm. when I'm not even looking out for myself sometimes, he deserves some worship and praise. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, looking at me, I also want to look back to David because, you know, because sometimes you wonder, how hard is it? Well, here's a man who started as a young child trusting God for everything he did. How many pe people are familiar with David? King David? Okay. Well, let me just tell you about David. I mentioned to you before that David said that he found David. He was, he was the son of Jess, and Jess was one of the Benjamites. And he, he said that David was a man after his own heart because he would do anything and everything that he wanted to do. David's life was one that he went through a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations. He had a lot of heartaches, not only with King Saul, but also with his own family. Mm -hmm. But after going through those trials, David wrote this song, and this is why I want to start off with this song. This song is written in 2 Samuel chapter 22, but it's also in Psalms 18. They're very similar. And David says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise. And I have been saved from my enemies. The cause of death entangle me. Now we've gone through a whole lot, but we haven't gone to the point where somebody's trying to kill us. He said the torments of destruction overwhelm me. Mm. The cause of the grave coils around me. The snails of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. So, again, for those who don't know David, I'm going to give you just a short recap. David was chosen as a king when he was a young boy, tending his father's sheep. He was anointed at that time that he would be king, but he just had to wait until God prepared him to do so. And then we have Saul. Saul, during this time period, was king. Now, Saul was the king that the people chose. David was the king that God chose. Now, what did the people choose? The people chose somebody who would look good. He was handsome. He was pleasing to the eye. But guess what? He didn't have a heart of God. He was disobedient. He was rebellious. He was arrogant, hateful. And he did what he wanted to do. Some examples of what Saul did was you know, if you go back and look in the Bible, one of the things that the priest had to do, the priest had the responsibility of making sacrifices for the sins of the king and the sins of the nation. So they will present a sacrifice to God. But Saul, in his urgency, felt like they were taking too long. So he presented the sacrifice to God yeah. for him and the nation. Totally disobedient. But do you know, when you're disobedient, God chastised you. Mm -hmm. Another thing he did was God gave him the Amalekites and he said, go possess the land. He'll make a way for you. He said, but of the spoils, I want you to get rid of everything totally. Take nothing with you. Destroy it all. So what did Saul do? God gave him victory over Amalekites. But when it came to the spoil, what he did was he destroyed everything that he felt like was damaged, was of no use. But then he kept the good stuff. He kept the sheep and he kept everything else that he wanted. Which was totally disobedient to what God told him to. So therefore, God had to deal with that. 
Now Saul also knew that God had secretly anointed David to be king. So as a result, he didn't like David. At first he did. But then when he felt his, like his positions were being indented and changed, he, went, he sought after David. So let's go over some of the troubles that David had when he was young. We talked about him attacking the sheep because he was a shepherd. So when he, when the lions and the bears came up against the sheep, David had so much faith in God that he would go after the lions and the bears mm -hmm. and he would kill them. So when he went to visit his brothers who was at the war with Saul and the Philistines, the Philistines taunted the tribe of Israel, saying how the lion was going to tear him apart and kill him. David, the little shepherd boy, said, I don't go against him. And he killed Goliath with a slingshot and a stone. Mm -hmm. That's how he became trying. But that goes to show how much faith he had in God. So he became victorious after that. And it's also when Saul recognized who he was and started paying attention to him. We've mentioned that David was anointed as a king at a youth. God just had to wait until to bring him into provision of his, of his position. But another thing that David was, David was a songstress. He played musical instruments and he wrote songs. And the song that we've gone over this morning is one of the songs that he wrote based on what he went through. And that's how he could testify of what God is. But he also ministered to Saul. Because when Saul would get that evil feeling, you know, sometimes, I don't know, if you ever got anxious, upset, mean, and don't know why you were mean, you didn't know what was troubling you, but if you listen to some gospel music, some soft music, it will calm you down sometimes, so you can think clearly. Well, Saul had a, a spiritual thing going on as well, where when he got in those feelings, David would play his heart and sing, and it will calm him down. Mm -hmm. That was That's a gift. That's a gift. David wrote most of the songs in the Bible. <coughs> and he sung those songs, and he worshiped God. This is a man of true faith, a man that we shall all want to be like. Now, David also had some trouble with Saul because, again, once Saul knew that David was going to be in line for the king, what did he do? He pursued David. Mm -hmm. And for 10 years, on several occasions, Saul and his army went up against David, looking for him to kill him. And there was at least five times that he did try to kill David, but each time, David. God had his hand on David, and David would get away. But there were also times where David had the opportunity to kill Saul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But David would never lift his hand against what he said was God's anointing. Mm -hmm. He would let him know, hey, I cut your robe off or I did this. I could have done this, but I didn't. He trusted God, and he knew that God was going to protect him in spite of everything. <clears throat> David also ascended to the, throne, to the throne once Saul passed away. Around 1010 BC, he became king of Hebron. And after reigning in Judah for like seven years and six months, you know, he conquered Jerusalem and he became king over Israel. He was there for 40 years reigning. But you know, still was no peace because he still had people coming against him. So he had several military campaigns that he went through. And on several occasions, he didn't have to fight. God fought the battle for him. Mm -hmm. He trusted God. Now, I'm not going to say David was a perfect man, because he wasn't. Even though when you go through some of the songs, David talk about how righteous he is and how good he was and there was no fault in him. That's only because when you confess your sins to God, God is faithful and just to cleanse you of your sins. And it's plenty of, of all unrighteousness. But David made some sense. Mm -hmm. He has some sense too. One of the biggest ones that we talk about is his moral failure when he went with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was the wife 
of Uriah the Hittite. And every, all the armies out fighting the war, but for some reason, David was at the castle this night. And he saw Bathsheba taking a bath on the rooftop. Now, David got plenty of wives and plenty of concubines, so he ain't need another woman. But the flesh, the flesh always wants something that don't need. So he laid with Bathsheba, got her pregnant. But to cover up his mess, because he didn't want nobody to know that he was the baby's daddy, he brought in her husband from the field. Uriah the Hittite. And Uriah came home, but this man was so dedicated to the king and to his troops that he would not go in the house to sleep with his wife. Because he felt like if they out there battling, he shouldn't be having pleasure. So he slept <laughs> outside the house. Therefore, what David proposed to do didn't come to fruition because the man had a faithful heart. So what did David do? He sent Uriah back to the battle, but asked him to put him on the front line. And when they put him on the front line, they said, as a troop advanced, step back. So what happened? Uriah was killed. That's a cover of his sin. Now, Nathan approached him about his sin. And once he realized how bad it was, he did repent. So God is faithful when we repent. No matter how bad you mess up, God is faithful if you repent and give it to him. But nevertheless, there are consequences. And he suffered some consequences. Now, you would think that, okay, he's this great king, he got this land, he got plenty of money, he got plenty of power. People bow down to him. He was a great king. But David also had some struggles within his family. And some of those struggles were with his sons. Now he had one son. And you remember he got plenty of wives and plenty of concubines. So some of these aren't full-fledged brothers and sisters. He had one son, Anod, who loved his sister Tamar. She was beautiful. And he wanted her. But that's my brother. So he came up with a scheme one day where he's going to play that he's sick so she would come over and nurse him. And when she did that, he did the ungodly thing and raped her. And then after he did that, she was no longer beautiful in his eyes. He didn't want to see her anymore. He cast her aside. So she's devastated. So her brother, Amosol, finds out. Absalom finds out and take care of her in his house because you know once you defile as a, as a female you defile, nobody else wants you but he made place in her house he took care of her he didn't go after Adnan right away for revenge but he did two years later he asked the king can I have this feast lord and David was kind of hesitant about sending all his sons to another son house to have his feast. But he allowed it. And he even said, hey, Dad, why don't you come up too? <coughs> well, the king didn't come. So as everybody is feasting at the table, what the Absalom does? He sought revenge on the brother who defiled his sister and killed him. So as a result, everybody flees. that you don't kill somebody. So, you know, naturally when it comes back to David, it sounds like all the boys have been killed. His entire family have been killed. But no, Absalom killed the one son. Took him two years, but he plotted, schemed, took a bench against him. Now, as you know, no matter how bad things are, you still love your kids. Mm -hmm. And you don't want one to harm the other. So he was devastated. He ended up grieving that son. Absalom ran away. But then they tried to make amends and allow him to come home because, you know, he was just looking out for his sister. But when he came home, you would think that he'd be grateful to David. And look, mind you, David didn't really take the time that Absalom wanted when he come home, came home either. He stood away from him because 
He was hurt. But Asimov started plotting against David. And when he plotted against David, he plotted so he could take over the kingdom, take over his wives, take over the concubines, take over the kingdom. And then what he did was, after he started getting people on his side, and he did it by telling them, meeting them at the courthouse and saying, oh, if I was king, I would rule on your side. Listen to their stories. Oh, if I was king, I would do this. Mm -hmm. So naturally, when people who he's talking and nice to people, they go back and they tell their other friends, well, you know, Absalom said if he did this, if he was king, he would do this. So when Absalom tried to take the king, kingdom over because now he got people on his side, David had to flee. He had to flee his own castle, his own territory, taking away what part of the family that he could take away from. Because now Absalom hated his father to the point where he's taking over the king. Now, I don't know about you, but after you give given everything to your kids mm -hmm. and they seek to do harm to you, that's very grievous. That's very hurtful. But this is what David was going through. And during this time period, he's running from, he had to run from Saul, he had to run from his military, but whoever thought he had to run from his family. Mm -hmm. He prayed to the Lord. And he asked for the Lord for deliver deliverance. And even during that time period, you know, he still didn't want any hurt to come to his son. But he wasn't going to stay there and get killed either. Mm -hmm. God heard his prayers. And God delivered him from his son. Now, when someone found Absalom and killed him, David still grieved because that's his child. No matter how bad he did, that's still his child. Mm -hmm. But you know, that all weighs on you. And that's something that you really have to give to God. He gave his, he cast all his cares to God. So what I want to talk, what I'm saying is that throughout David's lives, just like our lives, you go in and out of various storms mm -hmm. and you have various issues. Mm -hmm. But in everything, David taught us that no matter what you go through, still have faith in God. Amen. Cast that care to, onto God because God is faithful. And when you, when you sin, confess your sins because God will forgive you. No matter what you go through, because we all go through things. We all have flaws. We all have troubles. But just confess your sins to God who is faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. We have that privilege as David had. And David was still blessed even in the end because Christ came through David's lineage. That was a blessing that was promised to him. So as a result of going through everything that David went through in his lifetime, he could identify as to who God was. God was his rock, his fortress, and deliverer. Do you know that God is your rock, your fortress, and your deliverer? Yes. A rock is, when he said God is his rock, that means God it's a firm foundation. He's unshakable and he's unwavering. A fortress, he surrounds us for protection. He gives us a safe haven in a time of trouble. Now, how many of y'all was riding down the road and almost was hit by another vehicle? I don't know about mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. yeah. but I remember being on 95 and a tractor trailer coming up. I did not see him, but God kept his hand on me. Amen. And sometimes when you want to make a turn or do something, sometimes it's prohibited. All to know that it was something down the road that you didn't need to be part of. Mm -hmm. And how many times you run across something, you said, dang, if I was just there a minute earlier, I'd have been caught up in that mess. Yep. God is a protector. Yes. Yes, he is. He's also a deliverer. Yes. When we're in stress, all we got to do is contact him. Just talk to him about God. Talk to him just like I'm talking to you. Because he will rescue us from our enemies and from our challenges. If you haven't tried him, try him. Mm -hmm. He's our shield. Yes. A shield covers you all the way around. Mm -hmm. So God protects us on every side of our bodies. Mm -hmm. Front, side, back. He got you covered. He's a horn of salvation. Mm -hmm. 
referring to the strength and the defensive protection for some animals. When we talk about a horn, just think about a reindeer. A reindeer. Have you ever seen an atlas? They're very strong. They use them, and if anybody, if they stick you, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You think about the horns of the breast of an elephant that's strong. God is strong. He's our horn of salvation. <coughs> He's going to protect us. He's going to rescue us from our enemies if we just trust him. He's our stronghold, a place of protection, a place that's secured. It's a safe haven. He's our refuge, a place where we can go and confide in him, talk to him. We can trust him at anything that we put in his hands. Amen. Amen. He's our savior, yes. who's our redeemer mm -hmm. and our savior of our souls. But God showing us that through David, and then when we really trust God and think about all that he's doing for us, we'll know that he is also there for us, our fortress, our, our rock, our redeemer, our shield. David described his situation that he was going through that time, and this is why he can call on God the way he calls on God. And tell you the characteristics of God. Because when he was going through those storms. Of running from people. He actually felt like. He was going to be killed. Mm -hmm. And yet he was on the verge many times. He said but when he called on the Lord. The Lord came through. And saved him. The way he described it. He said when he called on the Lord. The earth trembled. And quaked, and the foundations of the mountain shook. They trembled because he was angry. God was angry. You know what? When God is just like any other father, when someone messes with his children, Amen. he's going. He tells you not to and me not to take revenge. He said revenge belongs to him. Amen. David went on said, "Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came from his mouth, burning coals blazed out of it." He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. Cherubim is an angel. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his present clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. He just telling us how God came and just rescued him. From whether it may have been the military or whoever was after him. God is our rescuer. Mm -hmm. All we got to do is cast all of our cares on him. And trust that he's going to rescue us. He will deliver us. He will answer our prayers. In our distress. When we call on the Lord. And God comes in and saves us. The one thing I want you to remember to do. <clears throat> it's a praising. Yes, amen. And that's why I come with my son. Yes. Cultivating the heart. Being grateful for how God rescues us. How he saves us. How he cares for us on a daily basis. No, we don't have the money today for that bill, but God is going to make a way. He brings things out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. we don't have the wisdom to handle some of the situations that we go through. But then he gives you that idea. That's what ain't from you. Mm -hmm. But he give you an idea and a direction on what to do. That's God. Mm -hmm. He give you wisdom and tell you how to invest your money. Because let's be for truthful. If it's in and of ourselves, we can't do anything in and of ourselves. Everything. Every gift we have. Every breath that we breathe. Every thought that we have come from God. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do. So why am I bringing this once again? What I want you to do is take time to think about what God has done for you and to give him the praise. Worship him. Why? Because that's his due. That's the minimum thing that we can do. God is worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. <clears throat> we need to praise him because we recognize without him we can't do anything. 
We need to praise him because we realize that he is our refuge and our strength. We need to praise him because we need to let him know that we are grateful yes. for Amen. all that he's done for Thank us. You, the Bible tells us that we should reverence God, which means that you should give him a deep respect, that you should honor him. We should be obedient because as obedient children, we should be worshiping God. So you say, okay, worship God, you know why? How is that going to benefit me? Because somebody always wants to know the bottom line. What's, what, what is it in for me? Mm-hmm. But first of all, he gave you life. Right. Mm-hmm. But even more so, I want you to think about when you really start taking time to worship God and taking your mind off of yourself and off of your own problems, just thinking about God, it helps you to develop a more intimacy with him. Yes. Mm-hmm. It opens your mind where you can talk to him more. Let you know that he is your creator. He is your God. And he's going to do whatever he can do to protect you. It gives you a deep sense of gratification, knowing that God is there for you. Not only that, it gives you a spiritual renewal within yourself. It refreshes your soul. It gives you a spiritual recharge. So if you never did it, I grant you and I challenge you to take the opportunity just to spend some time and worship God. Then, when you worship God, it gives you joy within yourself. He gives you a sense of gratitude to help you along. He helps you focus and reduce the anxieties in your heart. Yeah. He gives you hope for his promises. And he lets you know that he's going to handle your situations. Mm-hmm. And he also gives you that release to take away the hurt, the pain, and the burden that you're going through. That in itself is uplifting. Not only that, when you worship God and take yourself, take your mind off yourself and put your mind onto God, He will do stuff that medication can't do for you. Amen. He will do, reduce your blood pressure. Yeah. All right, Jeffrey, you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> if you want that blood, that blood pressure to go down, then spend some time worshiping and praising God. He relaxes you, He allows you to meditate, sing on Him, Ooh. sing praises to Him. Amen. He will reduce the stress that you're going through. Cast your cares on him. Because you know what? Worrying don't do anything but make you sick. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything about worrying. Cast on to the Lord. Let him take care of it. And just reap the benefits mm-hmm. of what he's going to do. Yes. And when we worship God as a family, mm-hmm. unity, it makes us stronger together. It encourages each other. It gives us experiences that we can share with one another. And it's nothing better than corporate worship. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Worship is a weapon. Mm -hmm. It's a weapon against darkness. I told you the benefits, how to reduce the stress and the anxiety that you're going through and how it it gives us hope and peace. But worship also confounds the enemy. Satan don't know how to handle you when you worship. And and he's going to do whatever he can do To keep you from worshiping God. Because worship arms us and disarms him. Mm -hmm. It gives us victories over our our battles. And it gives us peace. It transforms us and aligns us with God. It makes us more Christ-like. And it opens up our ears so we can hear the whispers of God. That's what worship do for us. Mm So, praise and worship is not a ritual. I don't want you to do a ritual. But it should be a lifestyle. Amen. And you can do it through <coughs> songs, music, any acts of service. Worship cultivates our hearts so we can magnify a loving God, a God for us. David sang this song. Because he knew who God was. He knew when he cast his cares onto God, God was there to take care of him. He knew that God was the stronghold. So he said, therefore, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praise of your name. He said, he gives his kings great victory. He shows unfailing love to his as anointed and to David his descendants forever. So I challenge you, And what I'm challenging you to do, I challenge you to remember what God has done for you. I want you to meditate on it. 
I want you to think about it. And on a daily basis, I want you to give God praise. Amen. I want you to seek his face. I want you to develop a relationship with him. And I want you to give him honor and praise <coughs> at all times. Remember that we cannot do anything without God. Amen. But with God, we're more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One more time. We can't do anything without God. Yeah. Amen. But with God, yeah. we are more than conquerors. Amen. We're victorious. Psalm 150 says this. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God in his sanctuary. Yes. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Yes. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him. Praise him for his surrounding greatness. Yes. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Praise him with the heart and the lyre. Yes. Praise him with trembles and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipes. Yes. Praise him with the class assembles. Yes. Praise him with the sound assembles. Yes. Let everything. Yes. Everything. Let everything. Hallelujah. Let everything. Yes. Let everything yes. That has breath. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't sit back and think, take things for granted. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow mm -hmm. is not promised. Not at all. While you have the breath. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why is in your mind? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Because without Him, we are nothing, can do nothing. Mm -hmm. But with Him, we are victorious. Mm -hmm. We are conquerors. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I have to thank God yeah. because I know God is good. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think about some of the things that He's done for me and my family. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Things that we didn't have any control over. Yes. Things that we couldn't do anything with. Yes. But, but what we did was call on the name but of the Lord. Lord. And he came back and he fought for us. Yes. He fought our battles. And he did what no man could do. Amen. He healed Michael. Yes. Healed our minds. Straightened our finances. Yes. Yes. He's doing the work on us. Amen. Amen. We want to be more like Christ. Yes. Yes. Trust him. Yes. Have faith in him. Give him everything. And just praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The same exact song. And I want y'all to stand up this time. And we're going to sing. Because God didn't put us in here to be seat warmers. Amen. He put us on earth to praise him. Amen. To worship him. Amen. To give him honor and glory for all that he it's doing for us. Yeah. Amen. So Amen. all all he's asking for is a little bit of worship and praise. Amen. He gave me everything. Mm -hmm. So this is our opportunity to just to say thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You give life. Yes, Lord. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. Mm -hmm. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. Your breath 
Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lives. Charges us, gives us joy, releases burdens, yeah. mm -hmm. gives health, mm. relaxes us. Mm -hmm. It's a stress reducer. Yeah. Yeah. It makes us strong together. We unite together. It's a weapon against darkness. Mm -hmm. It confounds the enemy. It disarms the enemy. Mm. It transforms us. It aligns us to heaven. Amen. David said, I will. Praise you. Amen. Yeah, that amen. means a will. You gotta be wanting. You gotta open your mouth. Amen. 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 Well, I praise you. Can, and you. If you don't sing well, guess what? Take a drink from those way. Amen. In your heart. Lord. Amen. And and if, if if nobody else gets it, make sure God gets it. Amen. 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 Sing to Him. All our worship and praise should be to God. Yes. yes. We come to church and we think I didn't get nothing out of that. Mm. I want to know. Did you bring something to it? Amen. 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 Did you amen. bring? A heart that's cultivated, a heart that's ready, a heart that's ready to pray. We thank God. This is something that we're going to continue this on Thursday. Mm. Amen. 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 Because we're right along when I'm teaching on about this heart thing. We're going to get. We continue this on Thursday. I think there's something we all need. The heart has to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Cultivated in order to bring forth fruit. So I thank God, First Lady, for, uh, only lady, <laughs> <laughs> for bringing forth the word of God this morning in such a powerful way. Yeah. And boy, she was about to, you know, I was afraid not to praise him to the end. She was <laughs> get up and plan to do something. <laughs> That's what leadership does. It leads you with. Sometimes we got to be led into stuff that makes us a little uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. Some of us never open our minds to say thank you, Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. don't be ashamed to thank God wherever you are. So I'm working on, I got a lot, to, I got a lot of homework. Amen. I pray you got it too. We're going to offer Christ to you today. Amen. Because you must start, even before you start praising, you need to make sure you have a relationship with him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because how can you hear without having heard? Mm -hmm. How can you hear, give God the praise we haven't heard about who this God is? How can you know, how can you trust somebody you don't know? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't trust a stranger, would you? Nope. nope. It's hard to trust people who are not strangers. Mm -hmm. So the more intimate you come with God, the more intimacy with God, <laughs> the more you're able to trust him. We say we trust God, but we do more worrying than we do praying. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say, I trust God. We want to develop and cultivate this heart that's close to God, that knows God for ourselves, and we can get through our everyday problems without worrying about everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We say it all the time, what? Turn your what? Your worry list to what? To a prayer, to a prayer list. list. Amen. So we thank God for the message and messenger this morning. 
We do offer Christ to you. We had in Sunday school this morning. These all go together. Romans 10, that if you call on the name of the Lord, he will say, how many of you say? Amen. If yes, you call, will. come on, if he call, if he, call, he will say. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you call on him, he will save you. Mm -hmm. You need a plumber, you need somebody to fix a plumber, you call on a plumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need a tutor, you need to get smarter, you call a tutor. You get you get a teacher. But when God came, you know what he did? He didn't send us a teacher. He, said, he was just a teacher, not just a teacher. He was a healer, but not just a healer. He sent an expert. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm one of them. How about you? Amen. Yes. That's what he came to do. Call upon him. Call He's upon right. him. He will save you. Call upon him. It's so simple. I say it all the time. We have all these terms to use about salvation, justification, redemption. Saying that means nothing to the person, average person coming on. They don't understand these things. But if a child can come and say, Jesus, come into my heart, make me. Be my Savior, be my Lord. If a child can say that, then you can say that. Amen. And receive Christ right now where you are. In your home. In your, on your bedside. In this room. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Be my Savior, be my Lord. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. A child can do it. Anybody can do it. Amen. 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 And if you call on him, he will save you. Amen. 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 He will save you. So we thank God today. For the message, the messenger. If we're done, we're about to get up out of here. Amen. And what we're doing this holiday season, what we're going to do? We're going to do what? Call, call cultivate. cultivate. Amen. Amen. And I ask y'all what we're going to do. We're going to look at each other, right? Call, we cultivate. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We out there working. If you don't work the field, guess what? You may end up in the field. <laughs> Amen. We out there cultivating. All right, because we want our hearts to be grateful to God for all the things he's done. So I thank God for each one of you. Come on, be with us on Wednesday night. I mean, Thursday night. For our Bible study, Thursday 7th, coming out, be with us again on next week on our west uh, side location. We'll be at um, 20, 26, 15, I think it is. 25, 16. 25, 16. 25, 16, Rolling Road. I used to say North Road, I just say Rolling Road. North Rolling Road, the GPS will put you somewhere else. Yeah, in the middle of the section. But <laughs> 25, 16, Rolling Road, amen. amen. Winds of Maryland. Come on by and be with us in person or join us again, once again, by uh, social media. We thank God for each one of you today who joined us and who will join us uh, later on as the um, as Facebook continues to place this on our page. And also later on, we we'll post on YouTube. God bless you. May heaven the richest blessings be upon your life. Uh, Mike Jr. is going to come and lead us in our closing prayer. And then we'll have an addition and be done. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for once again waking up this day, allowing us to see a brand new day before us, giving us another day to actually worship you and get close to you and help somebody else see you through us. Lord, please touch us directly, Lord. Touch us individually, Lord. Allow us to draw more people to you. Let your light to shine upon us. Let us be simple mirrors reflecting your light, Lord. There's so much darkness in this world. And people are bold about that darkness. Mm -hmm. Teach us to be bold about our bright, mm -hmm. our righteousness, our, 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 way for, our way of living through you in faith, knowing that you can bring us through any storm that comes our way. No matter what the situation is, big or small, you said give it to you, give, give it all to you. Mm -hmm. There's no woe too little, woe too big that you can't handle. You're the creator of the heavens and the earth, so what in our lives can't you handle? The only people that have, the only people think that you can't do it are the people that don't know who you are. Amen. Lord, teach us, show us who you are so we can show other people. Help us be a, a way of ushering a new wave, a new, a new, uh, a new uh, refreshing of the spirits of these of the people of this world. We know that it's going to get darker, but you are the light. If, if we read the book of Revelation, we know that you have a plan and you get the victory. We want to be on the victorious side and bring more people along with us. Lord, help this ministry draw more people unto you. Lord, help our, uh, help everybody that we come in contact with on a regular basis. Help us simply be a, a, a refreshing, a refreshing breath into their lives. And let them question, why are you this great? And allow us to be able to turn around and say, because I know God. Amen. I know Jesus for myself. Yes. 
would you like to meet him as well? I can introduce you. That's all we're meant to do. As any believer, it's all our jobs to bring bring forth the gospel. Mm. Lord, help us. Give us the strength in every day. Bless everybody, everybody in the sound of my voice right now. Let them know that they are not alone. They don't have to be stuck in darkness. But one that brings the darkness has been already defeated by the God of light. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank the Lord. So we dismiss and thank God for each one of you joining us today. Uh, please know that from my heart to yours, we love you. And that if you need us, please contact and let us know if we can help you in any way. Uh, we're seeking to grow, amen, and be more like Christ in our everyday life. We pray that somehow this message and this ministry will help you and cultivate your life, amen, in some way to get closer to God. So God bless you, family. May God's richest blessings be upon your life. May he keep you and watch over you, give you the health and strength, and most of all, a heart that's inclined to keep his word. We ask it all in Jesus' name. God bless you, King Praise Ministry, signing out. Amen. amen.